And we're going to go to this. From the secret palaces of the Orient, from the modern masters of Hollywood, comes the most charismatic, most exciting, most reality-altering talk show in town. It's Marcus the Interviewer. Marcus the Interviewer. It's not just a talk show. It's psychological entrapment. They'll never see it coming. And they'll never know what hit them. One show, and the audience is yours forever. Join the masses and applaud, laugh, cheer, and yell his name. Marcus gets you in the mood. He brings out the person inside of you. He brings out your energy. He charms. He gestures. He enchants. He acts. He's a charisma. And around him, you feel like one too. Remember, if you don't use him, then someone else will. Act now while there's still time. Come in and tell your story. Come in and promote your brand. Come in and set the world on fire, if that's what you desire. For Marcus is the guy who's got you covered. Legends are born, not made. Stars, celebrities, and legends are made here at Marcus the Interviewer. You come in a civilian and leave a superstar because that's just what Marcus does. Watch Marcus on weeknights with the hottest commodities and superstars in town and join in on the fun after work. Sit back, relax, and let Marcus do his thing. Come be a guest on the hottest, most talked about culture-driven show, Marcus the Interviewer, where stars are made and legends and icons are celebrated every Tuesday and Thursday from 6 p.m. Central Standard Time to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Allow your favorite brother and friend to take your brand to the masses. Marcus the Interviewer is ready to tell your story. Oh, see, I didn't even know that y'all was there. Welcome, 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 welcome to a new episode of Marcus the Interviewer Show. You already know what we do, friends and family. You already know how we do. We get together. We just be laughing and talking and stuff like that. You already know what it is. I hope you had a beautiful and blessed Thursday, you know, because my day was like extremely busy. I mean, and long, like a buffet line long, like a long subway 12 inch. Like, uh, I mean, it was just long. So, um, before we introduce this dynamic, powerful, inspirational, inspiring family, you already know, I can't go without hearing my theme music. Hey, yo. What's up, babe? Yo, this is the one, bro. Oh, yeah? What's good? I am telling you, man, that, that cat Marcus Boyd, yeah. you know, the interviewer. Yeah, I know that cat. This is the one, bro. Woo. Okay. Mr. Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. You want the scoop, he gon' give it to you. No matter the conversation, he's already prepared to go and get into it with you. If you want somebody that's willing to listen with positive information for the vision, then all you gotta do is give him a call or catch him on his Instagram, that's all. And he gon' get with you like ASAP. They gon' tell you where to place that. And he gon' give you every single thing you need in order for him to like make that dream happen for you. You believe in it, do what you do. Competition is sick with the flu, so if I was you, I would just jump on the plane, cause he's coming through. Yo, it's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Some people call him a kind of if you ain't never had it, you about to get it, cause Marcus is about to give it to ya. Marcus Boyd, the interviewer, the conversation king, Penny's the ruler, you'll never find an interviewer that's cooler than leave you feeling like he already knew ya. It's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Call him a kind of super. If you ain't never had it, you about to get it, cause Marcus is about to give it to ya. It's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Conversation King Pin is your ruling. <laughs> Mr. Marcus Boyd be bucking and bucking and bucking on him like a Bronco. Catch you with them conversation combos. He ain't with the he said and the she said. That ain't the way that it's done, yo. It's that real deal. Holy feel. It's so for real and you can feel that. He escaped from all of the imitators, so you know that he know what a real at. Like A1 on your plate, son, but it's all good. We don't knock that. But it's ball floss with his hot sauce. And he paid the cost, so we rock that. It's your now later. And your lemon heads with your popcorn and your soda pop. Now go ahead and buckle up for the ride, cause in a second you'll just show drop. Yo, it's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Some people call him a kind of sewer. If you ain't never had it, you about to get it, cause Marcus is about to give it to ya. Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. The conversation king pen is the ruler. You'll never find an interviewer that's cooler than leave you feeling like you already knew ya. It's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Call him a kind of sewer. You ain't never had it, you about to get it, cause Marcus is about to give it to ya. It's Marcus Boyd, the interviewer. Conversation King Pin is your ruler. You'll never find an interviewer that's cooler like I, 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 I. Yeah, people. Listen, I need my theme music like runners need water, okay? It's life for me. So, what we're about to do, 
we're about to bring in a dynamic, powerful family. You understand what I'm saying? Because, again, this, this is Autism Spotlight. On Marcus the Interviewer Show, we do this every Thursday because we want to spotlight autism individuals, families, professional workers, organizations, uh, volunteers, um, you know, friends, individuals with autism. So this dynamic family, when I heard about their story, I had to get them on here because this don't just represent them. It represents many families globally, worldwide, and they are a light. They are a beacon of hope. They are inspiration to so many. So I want to introduce you to many people around the world, many, many around the world, uh, to the Taylor family. So let me go ahead and bring my guests up in here. You know what I mean? So how you doing, Miss Taylor? Good. How are you, Marcus? I'm good. I'm good. How was your Thursday? Busy, as usual. <laughs> so, so talk to me about talk to me about the Taylor family. Introduce the Taylor family to my family, so we can know who y'all are. Do you want a more longer version? Un like, unfortunately, due to the case of time, <laughs> right. Um, right. Let, let, let's get to the meat. Let's get to the meat. We can skip the vegetables. Let's get okay. to the meat. Okay. Well. My husband and I, we met in college. Um, we found out that we were pregnant with our first child, Dean, who's eight years old now. Um, he was diagnosed at about three years, two months old with nonverbal autism. Uh, and from there, uh, you know, our whole life changed. It, it's not just something that, like a sickness that they can get over, it's a lifelong disability. Um, so we had to change basically everything um, from where we lived. We lived in Kansas. Now we live in Texas. Um, and then in so between that, we have, from Kansas City. My my boys are both from Kansas. I'm from Kansas. Um, we moved to Texas oh about five years ago, and that's so can, I my husband, question, can I ask a question, Taylor? Can I can I ask a yeah. question? Mm -hmm. Is it true? About Kansas, about like the commercial with the hot sauce. Do y'all got the hottest hot sauce in the United States? I just really want to know. <laughs> no, Texas does. <laughs> Hands down, Texas is much better hot sauce than Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so what, is, what about your other two amazing children? Yes, yeah, Samuel, um, right before we moved to Texas, he was, uh, he was maybe two years old. And then when we came to Texas, I found out I was pregnant with Piper. So I have three children um, that are nonverbal autistic, Dean, Samuel, and Piper. And Dean is eight, Samuel is six, and Piper is three. Uh, and I guess so, it's- So Ms. Taylor, how, how, do you, how do you and your husband on an everyday basis deal with the challenges, not just from one child, but the challenges right. of three? How do y'all- how do y'all maintain that and still have a beautiful family? It It is very difficult. We don't have date nights. We don't really have time to do much else besides take care of the kids and go to work. Um, I don't work. My husband's the only one who can. So I can, it's very expensive to hire a babysitter for three children that are neurotypical compared to autistic children. Um, so that's he wakes up with me in the morning and he helps me take care of the kids. Um, our daily life is, is more so they run the house, I guess you could say <laughs> only to an extent, but each child has their own in particular things they like to do. Dean would rather hang out with us in a more quiet space. Sam is very loud and doesn't have any idea of personal boundaries, but he's a very loving child. Um, and Piper, she just is kind of in between Sam and Dean. She like loud noises. So it, it kind of is different with each child. Um, but they still are very dependent on, they can eat snack foods, but they can't eat, um, uh, using utensils. Uh, they can't speak. So it's something that they're constantly trying to get us to 
to do something, grab our hand and move our hand to what they want, like the channel to be changed. Um, so we really just have to know what it is that they need or want. Um, and it, I think my husband and I are really the only ones who really know without them trying to tell somebody. And that's usually getting upset or uh, it's usually because they can't communicate that they get upset so often. Uh, so that's basically what it is. We wake up, help them brush their teeth. Um, we have to give them baths. They don't know how to care for themselves in that way yet. Uh, but we do still try and continually work on it every day to teach them how to be independent. So that is a very big thing to teach independence. And it's not even necessarily putting on their shoes and tying their shoes. It's telling us what really makes them happy and what we can do to keep them thriving um, with their everyday life. So it's well, always about listen, because, so. because you and your husband is doing mm -hmm. such, such an amazing job. Y'all are an inspiration to so many Thanks. people. On the Marcus, the interviewer show, you get a hand clap for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you get a hand clap. Thank you, no problem because I was nonverbal till I was 13, 13 and a half. I didn't speak at all. I started speaking at a two year old's level. How how did you so what was your first word? Like stop. Your first word. What was it? <laughs> stop. Oh, okay. Stop. <laughs> because, yeah. <laughs> because I come from a household of 22 kids. So, you know, my my nine sisters and my grandmother was on me religiously. <laughs> they was it was on my case religiously. And you know, they said that I was brain dead. I would never talk, walk, uh, get an education. I never do a bunch of stuff that God has allowed me to do. Right. And I didn't start talking right. like I do now until I was almost 18. And I was almost 18 and I started talking like this. So it was a it was a process. It wasn't like, oh, right. one day I just said yeah, stop. And the next day I'm like, how y'all right. doing? It was a process. And right, right now at almost 40, I still have to learn independence. And I'm almost right. in January, I'll be 40. <laughs> so it's a it's an everyday, all day type of situation right. so tell the tell the right. audience and the family tell the audience and the family about your y'all amazing gofundme project what y'all doing with that how did that get started how can we help in your gofundme yes. efforts yes um it was about a month ago my well a couple months ago that my husband's job that he had they were lowering his hours he works at worked at a furniture store it's called best choice products and they lowered the hours inflation nobody was purchasing anything so they didn't have warehouse hours um so even though it was a great job he, we still need the income so after that started he then tested positive for covid for the third time um although they wouldn't fire him they would not pay him so and he couldn't work even if showing symptoms see guidelines say five days for quarantine he was out of work for two weeks um, when he went back he was even getting shorter hours than he was before so when I started the GoFundMe uh, it was to fill the gap of the income um, that we it's very hard already as it is even when he gets a full 40 hour check so that's what we've been trying to do we are behind on certain bills. Um, we struggle to get everything that the kids need. And I homeschool them. Um, I've had a horrible experience with Texas public schools. Now Kansas public schools were so much better. Um, but I homeschool them. So that's an entire, entirely additional thing that I have to do for them. 
Um, but I think that they're doing a lot better with homeschooling than they are even if they were in public school. I think they've came a lot farther than they probably would if they were there. But of course, it's a financial burden as well. So that's, you know, we were lucky to have certain family members that are there to help share awareness. Um, we've met about half of our goal so far, um, but we do still have oh, a little over $1,000 left um, that we're trying to get uh, raised for our GoFundMe. Um, but all of those things that they would be, you know, homeschool supplies, incontinent supplies for the children because they still have yet to, you know, potty train um, and everything else that you can possibly think of that it would take to uh, keep them happy. Um, electronics is also a very big thing with our children, um, Samuel in particular. He, I don't know how many TVs he's broken. I love him to death, but if he gets upset, he will break the TV. Uh, we have tried to put the TV down and strap the TV down to the, it just doesn't matter what we do. He finds a way. Um, so we got a projector, but the projector that we have, I guess. So that's, something that I'm also wanting to do is try and get a new projector, a TV stand for the wall. So he can't, cause he can't climb on the wall to get it. <laughs> so those are the things that I really um, would like to try and get for them to make their lives a lot more calming. Uh, it may not sound like, you know, electronics is something that you want to keep from your kids, but for my kids, it's how they can communicate with us. B is well, I'm a big electronic guy. You know, I, yeah, I love electronics, needs. and your son is not alone because I will break a flash screen right. in a heartbeat. I don't broke a bunch <laughs> of like I don't broke a yeah. bunch of like you know, yeah. <laughs> my team. My team would tell you, yeah. don't if he's frustrated, get him out of a, a building, a house, a apartment, a. I, I mean, right. they'll tell you. Right. So, um, yeah. you know, my so my listening audience. I'm going to make sure I have the Taylor family's GoFundMe link and the YouTube um, link and yes. the Facebook link when I share this amazing interview. So please, we asking for Marcus. any type of donations, any type of help, anything will help this amazing family. And it goes towards the children, the embedment of yes. the children and different things of that nature. So Ms. Taylor, because you are a mother with three beautiful, um, you know, kids with autism. Um, mm -hmm. How do you, like, when days that you stressed or feeling depressed or, because this really can help a mother out there that has right. a child with autism. How do you right. handle your stress points, your depression points? How do you still fight and don't give up? I think the number one aspect of my life is, that the, my children are my everything for any mother who has any type of special needs child. Our only focus is only ever on our children. The depression comes because we can't take care of ourselves. It's hard for us to even get up to brush our hair, or brush our teeth some days. Um, from the second we wake up, we have our children that need us that we are thinking about rather than ourselves. So we have to just keep it in mind that we have to take care of ourselves to take care of them. Um, I reach out to, I have a couple friends from high school uh, or even my mother-in-law um, that I reach out to that I can just call anytime and they can talk to me and vent anything out that I need to vent out and they can give me just that mental support. Um, I'm there for them as well as they are there for me. So having those people, uh, it could even be the person at the gas station that you see every You know, encouragement that you're doing something good. You're, you're doing great at what you're doing at that point in your life. I mean, to just keep going because we're the only ones, we're their voice. And that's the biggest part of autism. In my opinion, there are other, every child with autism is different. And I know that by having three. <laughs> so, 
it's a, every person is going to have different struggles with their child with autism. Um, but it gives me hope seeing you um, and seeing other people throughout the support groups that they say the same thing. Like I was diagnosed at a very young age. Um, but look at where I'm at now, you know, don't give up on your children. They're don't just let them go to a certain level, always shoot for the stars. And that is my number one motto is to shoot for the stars because they have so much potential. It's just, we need to learn how to, how they, te they teach us so we can teach them. Uh, it's a structured type of society and we need to change that for their benefit. And that's what I always try to do. But of course you have insurance and other battles you know, behind the scenes that you have to deal with as well, especially when you um, are low income. Low income families have it a lot worse than, say, a person with private insurance who can get ABA therapy, who can have um, purchase things for their home so their children can't hurt themselves if they have those behaviors. Uh, there's so many things, but having those people there definitely helps. So for my listening audience, to, for my family, so um, mm -hmm. the one question is, like, when you and your amazing husband is not on family mode, what's some of the things that y'all like to do? Some of your favorite food? What's some of your favorite mu music? You know what I mean? Like, right. we want to get to know the Taylors. Right. My husband, um, he actually got me more into, uh, like, atmosphere, um, more underground and ever since then that's been my go-to <laughs> but I do so I'm still a huge fan of Cardi B or I'm more of that kind of person he is all genres um but I'm from the country I love my country music so I kind of go back and forth with that and that does help me too I can listen to music and then and just listen to music and that helps me kind of come back down to my peace mode. <laughs> um, or we really, we're so tired most of the time, Marcus, we just we'll watch Netflix or we rewatch shows we've already seen uh, <laughs> because that's the only thing that we have the energy to do most of the time. Well, I, I get it. I, I get it. It's a lot on yeah. the plate and, mm -hmm. you know, so what, what advice would you give parents who are raising multiple children with autism, mm -hmm. what advice can you help them out with? That having multiple siblings is a blessing. Um, they help each other and they teach each other. Uh, sometimes for my older son do something that my younger son does, even though he should show them the better way to do it. Uh, but they help each other. They do. They socialize. Um, they help one another when they go to the stores. Uh, and they just don't even realize it. So just keeping that in particular, that bond with each and every one of their siblings will help them become more independent. And it would also help them when they want to venture out into the world and not live with mom and dad or want their own space. Uh, so to me, I think that they, they help each other, even though it can be very irritating with certain behaviors. Um, but really in between those, you can see the skills that they're learning from each other. <laughs> so, so tell my audience, my family, my friends, so tell them what is next for the Taylor family. What you got up the sleeve? Uh, Right now, we just need to get ahead. We are in a certain spot where we don't feel like we can get ahead. Um, I'm struggling right now with getting my kids back into therapy. They, it's a, it's a battle with insurance every day. I'm calling them constantly. Um, because, for example, Samuel had physical therapy, occupational therapy, um, and speech therapy. All three of them did. But because we had COVID, when the pandemic started, um, we were gone for a month, we came back and they discharged them. 
um, simply because they weren't progressing, but you didn't give them enough time to, of course, they're going to regress. Autism comes with progression and regression. You have to give them that time to re get more used to that environment that they're going back into. They at one point stopped and you have to get them back into it. So it's not just the providers and the facilitators. It's the insurance that you have to go to first and explain to them and fight for them that they deserve two times a week for therapy for 30 to 45 minute sessions. Personally, I think they should have it way more often because the more repetition that they have, the more likely it is to stick with them as they grow older. And at the youngest age, that's the best time because their brain is like a sponge and just like any normal child teaching them at a young age is the best thing to do for any kind of therapy purpose. Um, but for Sam, he only has one time a week and it was only because he showed progression, slight progression with his testing. So now I have to tell them that that's not fair for him because for years, he hasn't progressed. And now the one time he does, you're going to say it's not medically necessary to have him on there for two days a week. So it's it, it may sound simple, but it's a very hard battle, um, paperwork and calling different people and trying to figure out who you need to contact. So that's a big thing with autism, trying to get them into to the right kind of therapy with the right people. It will help them so much. Uh, I had ABA for Dean when he was first diagnosed in Kansas and it helped him tremendously. He is still has some of those behaviors, the good behaviors that he learned from those therapists that he's still. My child was just diagnosed with autism. What do I do? It's, you know, first, it's going to be okay. You know, your child loves you. You love your child. That's the first part of any issue that you come with medical wise. But now you just need to see what your insurance offers and if you need to get more insurance. Um, and I always suggest ABA therapy because it's like occupational speech um, and physical therapy kind of all in one. And they are way more trained. Um, one person, a VCBA is way more trained than a speech pathologist would be that you take to an outpatient service provider. Um, but Medicaid doesn't cover that in Texas. So that is something that I would have to pay out of pocket for. Um, out of network, out of pocket, 100% my responsibility to pay for. And each evaluation is at least $350, depending on where you go. And then it comes the per hour rate. Um, so it is very expensive. And again, it's difficult to even think to try and get ABA therapy when Medicaid doesn't cover it. So you go with the next best thing, which would be individual therapies. And that's where I'm at right now in between the waiting period to get them reevaluated to go back to those therapies. It's, it's just, it breaks your heart thinking about it because people should be more aware, insurance, the state, the government, everybody should be more aware of how crucial it is at the earliest ages to get those services because they could speak sooner. They could do so many things more quickly and at a developmental age than they are now. So it's, yeah, it's a very big struggle with that alone. Um, and to me, that's the biggest part that I'm dealing with right now is insurance <laughs> and trying to keep, make sure that all of our bills are paid when there's no money coming in. So we still won't see my husband's paycheck until two more weeks since he just started this week. Um, and that is, you know, again, the GoFundMe would be the best way to help us. Um, and it, no matter what it is, any little amount would help. I can promise you that. Well, how can my listening audience and my family get in touch with the Taylor family? What is your social media? How can we get in touch with the Taylor family? 
um, you can, I have a Facebook, um, or you can email me. I can give you my email, um, and my phone number. So what is your email so for the listening audience? How, your Facebook and your email. Um, you can go to, I have two Facebooks, Dean Taylor and Taylor Taylor. Um, I usually go on my son's Facebook as Dean Taylor. Um, or my email is tshuss08 at yahoo.com. Well, any last words of encouragement that you want to give to the autism community that may be facing your same situation or may have faced another situation? Right. Any words of wisdom that you can give? To stay strong. Um, we are all going to fall down and have to get back up. Our children are the ones who... Don't be scared to ask for help. There's no stupid question when it comes to autism. The more help that you can ask for, the better. Well, people, family, everybody hey, that up, is tuned bro? in, yo, this is the one, bro. listen, this oh, has yeah? been another yeah. incredible hey, episode you, man, that, that of Mark's Interview the Show. Boy, we want to thank the amazing, incredible that. legends this themselves, the Taylor oh, family, for coming on this show, you want expressing their story, right. expressing their strength, and we just want to continue to encourage them. And it's the next time, we also want to thank the minister for the amazing theme music. I mean, he's out of Atlanta. The minister, go ahead and check him out. He's doing an amazing thing. So until next time, to next Tuesday, to next Thursday, you already know what it is. This is Marcus, the interview show. Some people call him a connoisseur. If you ain't never had it, you about to get it, because Marcus is about to give it.